Dear students, in this video we are going to discuss about population inversion, pumping and its methods. So first let us see this topic population inversion. So be, please watch the previous videos for better understanding of the all the concepts. So now we are going to talk about population inversion. Here population represents number of atoms in the ground state as well as in the excited state. So to understand this concept in the previous video we have discussed about the Einstein's coefficient. To achieve that to get that stimulated emission population inversion is important. So how this population inversion is achieved? Let us see one by one. So first to before going to see this population inversion, let me explain about normal population. Okay, first condition is normal population condition. What is the meaning of normal population condition? So as we know well, we have two energy states. One is the lower energy state which is E1 and another one is the higher energy state E2. So generally there is no energy supplied from externally. So the atoms will be present in the ground state only. Without any energy means more number of atoms will present in the ground state more number of atoms will present in the ground state right so now uh, this is uh, this energy level the lower energy level uh, number of atoms is n1 so n1 represents number of atoms in the ground state and n2 represents number of atoms in the excited state in excited state also few atoms will be present right now if you see this what is the condition actually n1 always greater than n2 n1 always greater than n2 if it is the case okay what will happen when any photon is incident on it if any photon is incident only if the condition is n1 greater than n2 what will happen absorption process only takes place which process takes place absorption process but for laser production we need stimulated emission process also so for stimulated emission more number of atoms should be present in n2 okay so that is the population in Inversion. That case is the population inversion. So now population inversion. So what is that population inversion? Inversion is reversed. So the normal population to be reversed. What is the reverse condition? Here n1 is greater than n2. But how it should be changed? How it should be inversed? n2 greater than n1. What is the case actually? n2 greater than n1. So how this condition can be achieved? By means of one technique that is called pumping technique okay so pumping means we are going to pump the atom from ground state to excited state so the process is called a pumping process so now you see this this is e1 and this is e2 so now i am here number of atom is n1 and here number of atom is n2 so by means of this pumping by means of some external source i am going to pump that means i am going to supply energy more and more so that the atoms will be excited the atom will be excited and then it will go to the excited state it gains energy from the pumping and then it goes to the excited state so now you see this condition now n2 is greater than n1 if n2 is greater than n1 then if you apply the um, photon then what will happen stimulated emission takes place so stimulated emission will be predominant that is the reason to get the laser we have to achieve the population inversion so the population inversion can be achieved by the process of pumping by the process of pumping so first what is meant by population inversion so how can we uh, define this population inversion it is the process by achieving simply I am writing n2 greater than n1 so what is this n2 greater than n1 number of atoms in the excited state should be greater than number of atoms in the ground state this is called population inversion it is the process by achieving n2 greater than n1 our our intention is we should increase the number of atoms in the excited state by means of some other thing so that which method we are going to follow pumping method okay so this is what we are going to discuss now so what is pumping method and what uh, what is that uh, sources required for that one by one let us discuss so now we are going to discuss about pumping 
so what is pumping what it should do the pumping process is nothing but it has to increase more number of atoms in the excited state it has to increase more number of atoms in the excited state so what we are going to do the process by increasing the atoms in the excited state then ground state is called pumping okay it is the process okay it is the process but it can be done by that means it can be done by the source it can, by means of supplying energy from the source so two things one is pumping so pumping is nothing but the process of supplying energy the process of supplying energy to the laser medium to the laser medium okay so we are going to supply the energy that is called the pumping but who will supply the energy that is pumping source the source which supplies energy is called pumping source the source which supplies energy which supplies energy to the lasing medium to the laser medium is called pumping source so now you have idea about what is pumping increasing number of atoms in the excited state by means of supplying energy okay by means of supplying energy and who will supply energy the source will supply that source is called pumping source so what are all the pumping source example for pumping source it may be light or electric field etc and so on so we are going to discuss different types of pumping methods so now what is pumping the process of supplying energy to the laser medium to achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 to achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 and the pumping source is the source which supplies energy to the laser medium example light electric field etc okay so next we are going to discuss about pumping methods what are all the pumping methods available to get the condition n2 greater than n1 so method of pumping method of pumping there are five methods are there let us discuss one by one the first method is called optical pumping first method is optical pumping and the second one is electrical discharge electrical discharge and third one is inelastic atom atom collision and the fourth one is direct conversion method direct conversion method and the fifth one is chemical reactions chemical reactions right so these are the five methods available to do the pumping okay so let us discuss one by one in detail so first one is optical pumping so optical is related to light so here the excitation that means we are going to excite the atom right so the excitation by photons through light we are going to achieve this so that we can say excitation by photons so uh, how can we say now two for that means two energy levels are there e1 and e2 so now we are going to supply the energy in form of light okay the light will induce the atoms from ground state to excited state to achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 so this is called optical pumping method and this method is used in ruby laser ruby laser or otherwise we can say this method will be opt for solid state laser solid state laser okay so ruby is a solid that's what i said ruby laser so optical pumping means by means of light we are going to achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 so which is opt for a solid state laser right so the next one is electrical discharge method so here what we are going to do excitation by means of electrons excitation by means of electrons in previous case by means of photons but the second one is by means of electrons so what we are what they are going to do they are going to 
discharge the gas okay for example this type of uh, uh, electrical discharge will be opt for gas laser gas laser so now they will take the gas material okay and then if they pass the high electric field what will happen the electrons are fast moving accelerated the accelerated electron will hit the will hit the gaseous atom will get the gaseous atom so what will while hitting it will pass the energy to the gaseous atom so the atom will go to the excited state so that it achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 so this method is called electrical discharge method by discharging electrons by accelerating electrons it will hit the gaseous atom so that the gaseous atom gains the energy and then it will go to the excited state so it achieves the condition n2 greater than n1 so So this method is opt for gas laser, right? And the next one is inelastic atom atom collision. So this is also the same. Its process also same like electrical discharge. Here also it is also opt for gas lasers. But here they will take combination of two gases. For example, helium neon gas. Okay, I can consider it as X gas and Y. okay helium and neon so what they will do the same fast moving electron hit the x gas first so the x will be excited so excited can be represented by the symbol x plus so this x plus will give energy to y so y will become y plus now so what is that first in two way okay first the electron hit with x so that it will become excited and this excited electro excited gas will hit with y so that y will be excited so in this way it will it will get, it will achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 so this is called inelastic atom atom collision okay by how can they choose this two one helium and neon means both will have the common energy levels the same energy levels so that kind of gases only selected for this kind of laser production so inelastic atom atom collision is also similar to electrical discharge but here two types of gases will be two types of gases will be used okay that is what you have to understand okay so this will be happen in helium neon laser helium neon laser right and the next one is direct conversion so here also electric field is applied but electric field means it will directly convert to the light energy so directly it converts electrical energy into light energy okay electrical energy into light energy that is the direct conversion method and the fifth one is this will have this will be uh, used in semiconductor laser semiconductor laser semiconductor laser right and then chemical reactions by means of some chemical reactions the atoms will be excited to the higher energy state there they will achieve the condition n2 greater than n1 so excitation can be done by chemicals excitation by chemicals okay so these are the different methods of pumping available so first one is optical pumping through light we are going to achieve n2 greater than n1 second one is electrical discharge through electric field or fast moving electrons third one also follow the same thing but here we will consider the two types of gases which have the same energy levels and the fourth one is direct conversion method which is directly converts electrical energy into light energy that is opted for for the semiconductor laser and then fifth one chemical reaction which is uh, done by the excitation can be done by the chemicals okay so these are the different methods of pumping available nowadays okay now i hope you understand what we have done till now so in this video we have discussed about what is population inversion so to understand population inversion i just explained about what is normal population and how population inversion can be achieved so by means of the process called pumping we can achieve the population inversion so what is the process called pumping pumping is nothing but lifting the atoms from ground level to the excited level and the that means supplying energy to the atoms okay so that is energy can be supplied by the sources so the pumping source also we have discussed and then what are the different methods of pumping available that is also we have completed in this video please watch carefully and if you have any doubt in this you can ask me in the comment box thank you everyone